Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Skies of Arcadia Revisited. I'm Nye, and we find our heroes finding that they cannot fight the Red Gigas Recumen and must find some other way to defeat it. They spent some time last episode trying to circle around it, shoot its heads, do everything they can with the most strongest weapons they have, but all they managed to do was scratch the paint job. So they backed off, and Vice was concerned that nothing is working, and Drachma comments that if we keep fighting it head on, we're gonna lose. Aka wonders if Fina has any way to stop it, and Fina comments that Gigas don't make their own decisions, they only obey commands given to them by the ones who awaken them. Until Beleza commands to stop, there's nothing we can do. So Aka has the bright idea that if something were to happen to Beleza, she knows how to stop that thing. And so, you know, we have another swashbuckler choice. We can either attack Beleza's ship, or we can ram into the Gigas. Seems like a pretty obvious answer to me. Let's attack Beleza's ship. Vice already knows what's up. If we can stop her, we can force her into calling off the Gigas. Aka is amazed by how much intelligence this has, Drachma thinks it's a good idea, and that we can fight against her longer than we can the Gigas, and that we should turn around, target Beleza's Let's ship, go. and all hands the battle stations. Spin that wheel, Vice. Let's go. So it's off to the actual ship-ship battle, the one we can actually win. Yes, we are fated to lose the uh, recommend battle no matter what. And the Lynx comes out to play. This is Admiral Be Beleza's flagship, the Lynx. She wants us to meet it and comments that we ha she has the Imperial Armada at her side and she has a magic cannon that will take us out. So typically you are not allowed to use magical spells when you're using the ships. There's just no way to use them. But if you have the magic cannon, which is something that Beleza has, you can cast spells through cannons and shoot them as if they're cannonballs. So we have to worry about her doing it, and so first she's going to start with uh, Ingram and increase the power of her ship. It's actually really bad for us. And then every attack she'll do from here on out is going to do 25% increased damage. That's terrible. We don't want that. But I don't want to use Ingram now because there's kind of no point. We're not going to get anything out of it. So we're going to kind of just fly alongside until I can get a chance to actually hurt her a lot. She fires off a Pyri, so level 1 fire spell to deal 3,000 damage, about as much damage as a Defended Against Recumen was able to do with his laser. Should tell you a lot. She should do a fair amount of damage on this next turn. Well, I'm just getting my SP together so we can actually do a lot of damage to her when I'm actually able to get my chance. Don't want to waste SP, I want to use it exactly what I'm able to. Here comes Wevelin, which is the level 2 water spell, which deals another 3,500 damage. We're already at half health, so I'm going to have to worry a lot about keeping my health up. Could be a grand old time. Notice her engines are in the front, dragging her along. So it looks like we're going to take a lot of damage during this turn, so we definitely want to make sure that... I'm going to make sure to send a main cannon along. I'm going to have Aka give us an Inkrum, and then Fina is going to heal us to full, and Drachma is just going to continue to give us some uh, spirit points, so we actually have it when we actually want to use it. But for now, we're just weathering the storm until we get a chance to actually fire on her. Uh, you could actually continue firing her all throughout this. There's no problem doing that. That's actually probably the smarter idea than what I'm doing. But what I'm trying to do is to keep myself at full health for as long as possible before firing off a, a harpoon cannon, because that tends to do as much damage as you need. They'll usually take out an enemy in one hit. Now keep in mind, the amount of HP we had at the end of the last battle is going to be the amount of HP we have at the start of this one. So you definitely want to make sure you're full HP leaving the last one, which is why I made sure to heal just before I finished finding Recumen. Beleza just fired off some missiles, um, some torpedoes. What that'll do is she'll fire it off one turn, it'll hit us on a later turn, this one being the one, to give us a massive amount of combined damage. She just dealt another 4,000 damage, so I'm going to have trouble keeping my ship together. We will fire at her every so often. I did just deal 1,000 damage, but you'll notice she has a lot more health than we do, because she actually has you know, an Imperial ship, whereas I'm fighting a little schooner, essentially. This is just a fishing boat that happens to have some cannons on it for defense. So Drachma comments that she's good, it's almost as if she can read our every move. Vice uh, needs to decide what to do against her good openings. So we have an option to try and get behind her ship or turn hard and try to catch her off guard, which is going to be the choice I make. So a quick turn to the side. Leza responds that our ship is quicker than it looks and that we have surprised her, but she has a backup hand and the preparation is one of the keys to victory. Luckily, this will allow me a chance to get a couple of green turns off so I can shoot her a few times without having to worry too much about what I'm doing. I'm going to make sure that we defend against the yellow turn, and off we go again. But keep in mind, I have to work against her every single time. i got to make sure that I'm always catching her off guard. Not exactly the easiest thing to do. 
We'll fire a couple cannons. We're gonna peg her a little bit just to make sure that her health is going down. I don't believe her ship can actually heal itself. Sub-cannons are a new cannon type that we don't actually have access to. They're smaller than normal cannons, and you use them on consecutive turns instead of using, like, uh, main cannons as you do. We'll get access to these a little bit later on. I believe it's immediately after this fight that we'll start getting some, so we'll see them in the upcoming ship-to-ship -ship battles. For now, I'm just going to make sure my health stays up. It's something that I can do that she really can, so it's always good stuff. And we'll continue moving on, continue firing at her. Hits us with a little bit of stuff, not something that worries me a thousand damage. Eh, that's when we start seeing numbers like four to five thousand damage that I start getting worried. So she'll only hit me with 2,500 damage, because I believe during that uh, turn I was actually taking evasive action. Yep, there you go. And it will be time to set up our new set of turns. So I believe I have another choice here. She's too good, he can't find any openings. We need to get into a good position to fire the harpoon cannon, so we need to see... Uh, we need to either wait and see what she does, or get set engines to full speed and get behind her, which is going to be what I'm going to try to do. Enemy vessel is trying to circle around us at what appears to be their top speed, but Leza knows that they need to only ensure that we do not get in a position to fire the harpoon cannon. So they're going to do everything they can to make sure we don't. Now, when you see the next turn flipping like that, that means that something that I will do between now and then will decide how much damage I do to them. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have... Ingram available to us next turn, so I gotta, I gotta make sure that I'm dealing as much damage as I possibly can on that next turn, hopefully defeat them entirely in one turn. Ingram only lasts for two turns, so it's gonna be this turn and the next turn. Next turn I get to fire the Harpoon Cannon no matter what I do, which is gonna decide how much damage I take while doing so. So I want to ensure that during this turn I prepare, I have everything set up so I can pile as much damage on her face as possible. What I'm also going to need to make sure is that I, there's also that command attack. Uh, there's that one turn where I do a lot of damage all at once. I want to ensure that I can drop a big attack on that turn as well. So we're going to heal ourselves up to full again. Just make sure that we have full health so I can focus on other things on the following turn. And we're just going to wait. Ingram will get us our increased attack, increased defense. So we should take a lot of damage during the next turn. And we also will not, uh, we'll, we'll do a lot of damage next turn as well. She'll fire some sub-cannons, we'll take some damage. It's cool, I don't worry about that. Damage is no big deal in the ship, as long as you can make sure that you're at full health as much as possible. I might be even wasting a little bit of uh, MP by doing it the way I'm doing. Unfortunately, we're at full or uh, half health right now, so I'm going to have to make sure that I heal myself up on the next turn. Because I actually was not expecting that much damage on that turn. Uh, it's the... Okay, so this isn't fair. Why won't she just sit still like everyone else does? How does she expect us to hit her with harpoon cannon like this? So we decide if we're going to head straight upwards or bring the Little Jack to a complete stop, which is going to be my option. Stop entirely, and then we should be able to aim just fine. And as you see, that seems to be exactly what we need to do. We'll drop an S cannon, we'll drop our... Oop, we're going to drop our standard cannon there, and then Fina can use Sac Rays, and Drachma can drop a Focus, and I'll be incredibly surprised if she lasts beyond this turn. It's a possibility, but I'll be surprised. Quick heal should get us back to about full health. There we go. I was a little bit worried about that just now, but uh, you know we're, we're back up to normal. And then we're going to go ahead and fire off our main cannons here. Deal another 2,300 damage or so. And now we can slide right on behind her and fire off the harpoon cannon to just split her uh, ship in two. So notice that we're right up behind the very phallic-looking pink ship. And Harpoon Cannon will go right up through her ship from uh, stern to bow. There we go. Goes right on through. That's going to deal 23,000 damage to take her down in one turn. And that's why I was trying to save up make sure I could just survive until I fire the Harpoon Cannon. There's potential that we could have killed her before that if I was actually firing at her, but uh, it's not really worth it. We'll get a couple of levels for our ship-to-ship -ship battle. There is no magic experience because it wasn't actually a normal fight. We did get a Captain Stripe, a Magic Cannon, which is a key item, so we'll just have that forever, and a 3-inch Blaster, which I believe is a sub-cannon. And then we get to signal Beleza's ship, tell them that we will attack if they do not call off the Gigas. And she comments that that's probably a good idea. Drachma just wants her to listen to our demands, and Vice believes that she will, because she's not the kind of person that would needlessly sacrifice the lives of her crew as well as her own. She's sure that she will call off the Gigas. Fina's praying that she will be intelligent. And then 
they notice that the Gigas is allowing itself to sink into the sand. So of course Belez is playing the intelligent way. Vice, the Gigas. And there's a reply from Belez's ship. We have called out the Gigas. We are making an emergency landing. We got to repeat on that to make sure that it happens. And Vice comments that, yes, we did it. We just beat one of the admirals of the Armada in our dinky little ship. Of course, don't tell Drachma that I said that. Get to see the sands. There's the uh, Gigas buried itself for the time being. All nice and pixelated. And there's the ship sitting there. Blizzard ship is smoking. Ours looks perfect. And we got our crystal back. It's safe! We did it! Blizzard comments that we have won the battle, but we are far from winning the war. There are five crystals left, and the Valuan Armada never makes the same mistake twice. We shall not defeat them again. And we comment that we will not make the same mistake of underestimating them again either, and we will get those crystals. Vice asks Fina where we should go next, and she comments that we should need to go southwest of Nasser, beyond the South Ocean. There's a continent under the Green Moon. Really? There's a continent on the other side of the South Ocean? Apparently the Green Crystal should be over there. Blizzard comments that the continent of Ixataka, their soldiers are already there, and the South Ocean has a strong headwind and will never make it across with that tiny ship. Drachma, however, has a plan. And he says that uh, we're taking their ship's engine, and that that much power should get us across the South Ocean in no time. Such an evil sailor that he is. Beleza looks amazed, asking how we're going to get back, and we comment that they should go back on foot. She tricked us, we take her engine, and that makes <laughs> us even. And uh, that saying, only those who have walked through the desert can truly know its size. Beleza is curious that she's going to have to walk, and she guess she's not going to have much of a choice. She's at least a good loser. She never thought she would actually know the size of the desert. At least she should have food and water on that hulk, right? She calls us back one more for a last comment, saying that we win this time, but Valua is more powerful than we can imagine, that the trip to Ixataka is long and perilous. The chance that we'll survive long enough to get there is pretty slim. She wants to know if we still want to go, because we have time to reconsider. <laughs> and Vice says that real sailors aren't afraid of the unknown, and that he wants to see the world. He's not going to rest until after he's left his mark on it and won't let anything or anyone stand in his way. Blizzard thinks he's rash and impulsive and hopes he'll survive long enough for them to meet again. There go our liftoff engines. Here's our victory music. And we have successfully beaten Beleza, beaten the Lynx, beaten Recumin. And we have gotten the first moon crystal. And off we go. Well, that's a victory for us, I think. Well, I just said it's a victory for us. We know that's a victory for us. That's a little bit of a feather in our cap. We receive the red moon crystal. And we're good. So the next thing that we're going to do... Well, Drachma says it looks like we picked up a magic cannon from the Lady Admiral. Using this, we'll be able to fire cannonballs charged with magical energy, just like Beleza was doing. That's fantastic. We should really put this thing to good use. We need to be careful, though, because using the magic cannon uses up MP like normal magic, so we shouldn't go crazy with it. So what we definitely want to do is we want to go ahead and use the ship ability Captain Stripe, which will increase our little jack up to 12,000 uh, health. And then we're now, uh, we are vice respected, yep. And we're going to go to the little jack, and we're going to replace one of the main cannons. Let's see. Yeah, I thought the, I thought the standard cannon was better than the main cannon. We're going to place a main cannon with a 3-inch blaster. It has better damage, as you can see, and a better hit rate, but it is a secondary cannon. So what that means is that we have to, you know, we can use it multiple turns in a row, and we'll get to see that a little bit later on. Now, we do have an extra 4 moonfish that we didn't have before, so I think the best thing for us to do is to go to dock and turn them in. Yeah. <laughs> 
combat, Fina learned Noxus, which is an AoE poison ability. But as I said, because of the fact that you can't really land status effects on enemies as well as you would like, there's really no point in actually using it. We'll head due west, back towards Dock. He should be over here somewhere. And then we'll turn in the four Moonfish we have. It's going to be the, uh... It's not the last chance we can for a while, but it is kind of obnoxious to try to do so without it. So up here is Doc. Let's see what he has to say. Hi. So let's feed the critter some moonfish, kind of as usual. Normal stuff. Try to get all this stuff out of the way early, and we should get some really good rewards for these next four moonfish that we're going to transfer over. The first one is going to be 50 Sky Sardis. Uh, I mean, those are just fish that we can catch normally, but the reason we want them is that we're going to use them in a trade later on. So it means that if you don't normally do fishing, that's a great way to get those fish. So after this next fish, we have now seen the second form of uh, our little guy here. So he's a lot bigger. The camera zooms out from now on. And he has a little bit of a head palm that we'll see pretty soon here. He's got our newest hairball. This next one's going to give us the Aura of Valor. Uh, I believe that is the item that increases our SP to full once we use it. I believe there's only three in the game. So you'll see he has that little head palm coming off the back. The Aura of Valor is pretty nice. You don't usually need it, but it's good to have. There are a couple of bosses that it's kind of nice to have that thing to give you a little bit of an easier, you know, an easier win. Moonfish number three is going to give us the Counter Bracer. Awesome item for Vice, increases the chance of counters, which means a lot more damage off of it. And I think it also gives a decent increase to attack and defense, so I have to check on that. Okay. And that is all four of our Moonfish. Here comes the last uh, hiccup here. And this is going to give us the Rissalim Box. Rissalim is the always works 100% uh, health uh, raise spell, and now we have that. So now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and check our equipment. Vice. Okay, we're going to take the Warrior's Room, and instead we're going to try the Counter Bracer. Increases his attack by another 10, drops his defense by uh, 10, drops his dodge by 10. Uh, but it does increase counter-attacking chance. But I'm going to go ahead and do that, because it's actually a really good item. And we will toss the, uh, where is it? I can't toss the warrior's thing on him. Oh, that sucks. Uh, we'll give him the black eye patch. Got to make sure you give Drachma something else, because he has to actually, he hasn't been with us, so he doesn't have any uh, armor. We'll give him the flame mantle. And we'll change his hook hand out for the excavation arm. Can I give... Aka, the uh, Warrior's Rune. Yes, I can. So that's not going to increase your attack, but it will increase a bunch of other stats. Okay, so we've given everybody about the best stuff I can, and the reason why we're going to do that is we're about to go do another uh, bounty. We're going to do it at uh, Maramba. The first time this is actually available is going to be immediately after you complete the Temple of Pyrin, so now is the first time we'd be able to do it anyways. And we kind of want to do this now because it gives us a really good item, as well as, you know, gold, of course. But it gives us a really good item that we can use uh, for ma the majority of the rest of the game, actually. Uh, we'll use it for a while. But you got to remember, we are a little bit damaged, so I definitely want to make sure to use, uh, to get everybody healed up before we do this. Do we actually have a Moonberry available? No, we don't. Okay. No big deal. It just makes my life a little bit harder. Okay, everybody's healed up. We'll use a couple more Moonberries. Or Magic Droplets, sorry. There we go. And then, very quickly, before we do this, we're going to save, because there's a significant chance that I will lose while doing this. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to go to this guy right over here. Isn't that one of the guys on the wanted list of the Sailor's Guild? Let's talk to him. There's this big guy saying that we have the look of the sailor about us. Today is our lucky day. They're feeling generous, so if we leave all of our money to them, they will let us walk away. Well, that's, that's considerate and generous. But do not attempt to resist, because we, they, are the legendary air pirates of the Larso clan. Well, that's, uh, 
That's a thing. So there, Lupi Larso, huh? Good timing, because they were just looking for him. He's made quite a name for himself, robbing innocent sailors, and as Boo Rogues, they cannot sit idly and let him continue like that. So he's quite brave for such a small boy, very well, and they want to battle right here. He comments that they should not do it and cause needless destruction in the city to meet him back at his ship and to fight on the deck. And they will have to lead the way. Okay, so this is Vice the Blue Rogues, Rupi Larsa, prepared to defend yourself. Problem is, this big guy is, uh, not Rupi Larso. In fact, Rupi Larso is that guy right there. That little kid. He apparently does not like fighting. And we get the goofball music in the background. But Barda comments that he's the head of the Larso clan, he should not say things like that, and there are enemies present. Now that his father's passed away, he is our leader, he must be strong. Aka comments this guy's a runt. Here the leader of the Lars Clan is a giant. What? Barda gets pissed and says we shall pay for our insolence and he shall crush our skulls like so many loquat berries. And Rupee is kind of annoyed by the uh, graphic quality of that comment. Barda says he needs to put fear into Venomies and that he should be strong. They're about Prepare to do battle. Yourself. And Barda says that we must show them the true power of the Larso Clan. Now the last time I did this fight, uh when I did my previous run-through of Skies of Arcadia, I decided to take out Barda first, because, uh, or I, I took Rupee out first, because Rupee has a lot of abilities he can do, including Berserk Rupee, which does a lot of damage. Uh, I've been told in a comment last time that I should, in fact, destroy Barda first, so that's what I'm going to try to do this time around. So everybody's going to pop their Glyphs of Might to make sure that we have those ready. So yeah, I'm going to try this a slightly different way, and we're going to see if it works better. So Barda has a bunch of abilities. Legendary Charge is one of them. This is going to mean his next attack is going to do more damage than usual. This is not something I'm particularly happy about. So let's pop our Glyph of Might here. Get all these going. Now, the annoying thing about Rupee is that he is a buff master. Uh, he is the backup mage in general. So he uh, does a lot of things. Let's try this. He just cost, he has to anchor him on Barda, so Barda's going to be even scarier. He's going to even more damage, too. Uh, he's also going to have less, uh, he's going to take less damage as well, so we're going to have Let's to deal with this. him. The other thing about Rupee is that he actually, he's also a spellcaster. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to have uh, Aka take her rightful place in battle, and all she's going to do is basically cast Delta Shield all day long. And Barda's just going to do his thing, so we're going to have to fight him. So we're going to cast Cutlass Fury on Barda. She is going to use Delta Shield. She is going to focus, and he is going to uh, attack Barda. I really should be using Shoulder Rush, actually, uh, or Tackle, whatever it is. Here's Legendary Punch, which is his next attack. Does a lot of damage to the target opponent. Uh, luckily, it's, you know, it's uh, the guy who can take the hit. But you can see how much damage that was. That was over half of uh, Drachma's health. Rupee's going to try to use Drill Nose, which would reduce my damage, but because Delta Shield's up, it's not going to do anything. And, bar and uh, unfortunately, he only takes 631 damage, which is, I mean, that's nothing. That's terrible. 263 off of Drachma's basic attack, and then a counter attack does another 357 damage. Uh, that was a really bad turn. Delta Shield. You're going to do a Sack Raise Crystal on Drachma, and Drachma is going to straight up tackle Barda. So we're going to try this strategy. I don't know about the strategy. I'm not so sure about it. I'm not sure how I feel about this. But we're going to try it, because I said I would try it. He keeps on doing Drill Nose. As long as we have that Delta Shield up, this should shut Rupee completely out of the fight, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And the Sacrae's Crystal is going to drop on top of Drachma. Gets him back in the battle. Isn't going to get him to full health, but it's going to get him nice and close. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Got another hit on Tubarda. Does another 788 damage. Uh, it's a pretty good move to use. Cutlass Fury. Nope, not on Rupee. I do not want that on Rupee. I want to use that on Barda. And, oh, I can't do that, unfortunately. Because that would not allow me to Delta Shield, and that's what I want to do. So uh, we're going to have to wait until the next turn to be able to use some big moves. That's absolutely fine. I have no problem with waiting and not doing big moves every turn. Legendary Fire is a breath attack that he does. Just does a fair amount of damage. So we're going to have to have uh, Fina heal herself again. 
This is mostly because Ankrum landed on Barda. It's kind of terrible that it happens, and I really don't like it. But, uh... Who is he casting Ankrum on now? Is he gonna let... Oh, he's let casting it on himself. That could be a fairly bad thing for us. I'm not a fan of it. And, uh, there's something to be said about the fact that I might... I probably should have waited to do this fight until later on in the game. Because there's a couple of abilities that I could have had that would have made this fight a lot easier. Uh, again, I'm not too worried about it. This is not something I'm concerned about, but uh, it's something to think about. Okay, Delta Shield. You, Sacrace Crystal on yourself. You. No! Ah, tackled on the wrong person. Again, no big deal. It just means a little bit of damage is dealt to Rupee that should have been dealt to Barda instead. Unfortunately, the game is, you know, sort of auto-targeting Rupee, and I wasn't paying enough attention. Barter's at less than half health, though, so he's not exactly doing well. So that is Fina back up to full health. Here comes another Drill Nose off this little pain in the ass. But again, we have our shields up, so it's not doing anything. And this tackle's going on Rupee. I don't want it to. Uh, the reason why is that the lower health Rupee gets, the, more ch the higher the chances that he's going to do something stupid. Uh, there's an ability he has called... Uh, uh, what is it? Berserk Rupee, where he kicks Barda at us, and it does a lot of damage, but he'll only do it when he's below half health, so we want to avoid letting him do that. Here comes another legendary punch off of Barda. It's gonna go to Vice, and it's gonna instantly kill Vice, which is really bad. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's why, you know, Barda having that, um, Ankrum is bad. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to spend a turn getting Vice back up, which, I mean, that's not the hardest thing in the world. I'm going to be able to do it. And once Barda goes down, we're basically going to have an easy run after that, but it's something I have to do. So we're going to go ahead and Delta Shield. Uh, you're going to use the Rissalum Crystal on Vice. Just get that out of our inventory. And then you are going to go ahead and tackle Barda to do even more damage. This will get Vice back up. Vice will have to use the Glyph of Might again, but uh, it's not going to be a big deal. Legendary Charge comes again, so Bard is going to do a lot more damage next turn as usual, so I kind of need to make sure that everybody is, you know, set and ready to go as soon as that happens. So here comes Vice, ready to fight again. And we're actually doing really good here. Drill Nose gets launched again. It's going to be blocked again. You know, we're not worried about it. Here comes a tackle right into Barda's back. Barda's getting really close to death, actually. Uh, he still has a couple of turns left before he's going to be actually just flat gone, but uh, he's getting close. We're going to use the Glyph of Might onto Vice. Uh, it can be used by other people, so it doesn't have to be used by Vice, which means that I can go ahead and spend Vice's turn attacking Barda and hopefully taking him down. Legendary Punch hopefully will land on Drachma. Maybe, possibly. Nope, it's going to be on Vice. It's going to flat kill him. No, it didn't. Wow, he's still up. That actually surprises me. Vice must have taken a little bit of damage prior to being attacked uh, the last time. So Vice is still up, but I will have to make sure to heal him before the next turn. So we're going to have to worry a little bit about Barda actually attacking him. There's a possibility Barda could land the attack before Vice is able to heal himself. So Barda gets his counterattack off. Vice is going to attack. If this counterattack... Oh, it's a counterattack. Oh, that's terrible. That is... That's really bad luck right there. The good news, however, is that uh, we are getting really close to winning. I'm just going to use a charge off this Rissalum box to get Vice up, and we're going to attack Barda. Now, there is a skill later on that Fina could have that would actually remove buffs from enemies. It's the next uh, legend or next super uh, move that she gets. I would love to have that super move. And we lost Drachma. That's really bad. Uh, the Legendary Punch is one of the reasons why I like to take Barda out as fast as possible. And now, unfortunately, Rupee is going to be healing Barda a little bit. It's not a tremendous amount. It's not something that's going to worry me, but it is something I have to deal with. So we're going to have a couple of turns worth of uh, advancement taking Barda out removed. And this is, right here is one of the reasons why I like taking Barda out first, because he's just such a force on the battlefield. He's extremely scary. Now, that being said, we have made a tremendous amount of progress here with a very little downside. And, you know, by doing what we're doing, by taking down Barda, and uh, Rupee has been completely negated. But Legendary Punch every single turn is 
really making it hard for me to keep myself alive. Panica would have caused Hughes problems, but thankfully, once again, Delta Shield has stopped that. Okay, Barda hopefully will go down maybe as early as next turn. It's a possibility. So I'm, I'm getting kind of hopeful that we're going to do this. I have no doubt that we're going to win, but I'd rather not have to use all of my items in order to force the win to happen. Okay, so we're going to use another Cutlass Fury on Barda. You're going to Delta Shield again. You are going to cast a Sack Race Crystal on Vice, and you are just going to flat out attack Barda, and hopefully that will be the end of it. it that's my hope. I don't know how likely that's going to be. Barda gets another Legendary Punch out, so he's just spamming this. That's all he's doing. He's just spamming that ability. Luckily, he hit the guy that can take it this time, so Vice will be able to stay up, get this attack off, and then hopefully uh, Barda will be taken out by this turn's Drachma attack. But as you can see, that's... Oh, he dodged. That was terrible. But you can kind of see, based off of what's going on here, exactly why I like to take Barda out first. Okay, we need to take Barda out. He has to be taken out this turn because such bad things are happening here. I don't really care about using all of my uh, healing items because we have so much money. I mean, it's no big deal. But it is, you know, this fight's going on much longer than it really should have. Now, Barda will actually heal uh, Rupee back, in which that's a wasted turn for Barda, too. So that's actually really nice. Okay, now Barda's been taken out. That means their main damage dealer is now gone. Like, he, he is, he's flat gone. Rupee's probably going to heal himself here. Yep. So Rupee's back at full health, but that's not a big deal. Rupee is now, and Bard is now out of the game. So that's the good news about this fight, is that the biggest damage dealer is now gone. But we did suffer a lot to get there. So, you know, it's a, it's a mixed bag. You know, this was both good and bad. And we should be winning fairly soon here. So, uh, you know, the question is, do, is it better to defeat Rupee or Barda first? Honestly, I personally say Rupee is probably still the best one to kill first, just because Barda does so much damage when he gets down to half health or less. He just spams Legendary Punch, and uh, depending on how early in the game you are, uh, it's just a big thing. That said, later on in the game, this might actually be the way to go when you have some other skills, when you have the cleansing skill that Fina gets that can get rid of all enemy buffs. That would have been helpful, and if I had that, taking out Barda would have been a lot easier because he wouldn't be one-shotting my guys. Now, the good news here is that now that we're fighting Rupee, his only uh, abilities really are to cast spells constantly, and because we have Delta Shield up, he's never going to get a chance to land any of them. So that's the good news. So the fight is gradually coming to a close. Keyword being gradually. Yeah, it's gonna make the uh, it's gonna make the episode last a little bit longer than I would have liked. I was trying to get this one to cut, you know, to exactly how long I wanted it to be, but to the normal 30 minutes. Not possible, unfortunately. But uh, you know, again, no big deal. We should be getting my good music sometime soon. That's the other thing, is that later on in the game, we would have had more SP available to us. So we would have been able to cast, you know, Tackle every turn, for example, stuff like that. Again, no big deal. But later on in the game, things tend to be a little bit easier. That said, enemies do scale with you. Uh, that is something the game does do. So the more abilities you have, the more abilities they will have. So you got to keep that in mind. But you tend to have the ability to counter that. Like, yes, they'll have more abilities, but you can set it up in such a way that your abilities would counter theirs. Like, Rupee would have better, you know, attacking spells, but because we're Delta Shielding every turn anyways, it doesn't really matter. Here comes a Pyrum, which is going to be blocked. Yeah, so Rupee is completely blocked out, and the commenter that made that comment was actually saying that you could negate all of his attacks with Delta Shield, and that's absolutely true. But, uh, Rupee isn't the big problem in this fight. It's, uh... Well, now my opinion is that Rupee is not the big problem in this fight. It used to be my problem, my thought that he was. But it's Barda who's the problem, but Rupee has a nice AoE ability, or nice, uh, nice big damage ability to, uh, yeah, that uses Barda. 
There we go. So down goes Rupee, which means we win. It did take a lot of healing abilities to get there, which was terrible. But we're going to get a crap ton of experience, which levels everybody up. Fina even gets two levels, and now she's basically officially caught up. And then we're also going to get some green spells, Sacri and Noxus. The Captain's Hat, however, is the true prize here. So we're going to get our closing cutscene here for these two. Or we've beaten the crap out of them. Barda cannot believe that they've been defeated. And Rupee comments that we shouldn't that they shouldn't pick fights like that in the first place. And Vice wants to wonder, does he not like being an air pirate? And Rupee says he doesn't. Actually, he can't stand the sight of blood. It makes him queasy. He'd rather stay in town with his mom and make carpets. His mom told him that the carpets he made for her sold quickly, and people are asking for more of his designs. Bard is rather upset about all of this. What will happen to the Larso clan? What will happen to its legacy? And uh, well, Vice comments that a man has to follow his own dreams, and if he doesn't want to be an air pirate, then what's the point? And that he's the son of an air pirate, and he's sure if he didn't want to follow in de his dad's footsteps, he wouldn't have, but that's the life he chose. If there's something Rupee wants rather, th rather than he should do that. If he don't, he'll probably regret it for the rest of his life. So Vice is being an awesome person, telling him he should go to the carpet store and make carpets with his mom. Nothing's more important than his dreams. Yeah. He can be an amazing carpet maker. Yeah! And Barda is upset, but he'll have to deal with it. And Aika tells him to stay out of it. She beat, he beat him fair and square, so if Vice says Rupee can make carpets, then Rupee can make carpets. And Barda has to admit that is kind of what happened. And Rupee says they should make carpets together, and he won't run away. Which is a wonderful thing. You know, you've got other things to do and other things to see, but good luck with yeah. them carpets. He may not have been a very good air pirate, but the name of the Larso clan will make good carpets. Amazing. I'm so glad he's making carpets. I said the word carpets way too many times this episode. Okay, so we're almost done. Last thing I want to do just before we save and finish is to put on the captain's hat, which will increase, his, will increase Vice's damage by so freaking much. All he loses here is his hit, er, is a slight amount of hit and uh, his counter ability, but again, that's not, like, that's not a huge thing. And we'll just uh, we'll equip uh, the counter bracer on Drachma, which will increase his attack and his uh, hit percentage, and we're good. That's exactly what I wanted. And now Vice is really scary. He does just tremendous amounts of damage. We're going to go ahead and save, and now we're done. When I see you guys next time, we'll be crossing the South Ocean. See you then.